we have good fun so far. We learned lots of things about K3, LP, but it's time now to see how these logics can help us to solve the Soraitis paradox, right? So let's look again to the Soraitis series, right? Just to remind you, this first element of the series is red, is clearly red. The last element is clearly not red, right? But each element in the series is is very similar to its neighbor, right? So it seems that all the conditionals telling you that if this if this one is red, the next one is red, all these conditional look to be true, right? Because otherwise it seems that we are making a very subtle distinction between elements that are very similar in color, right? So the problem in classical logic was that although the so the first is, if the first is red and the last one is not red, then there must be a false conditional, right? In particular, because the inference of modus ponens, this inference here, this inference is classically valid, right? So since the, the inference that leads you from the first one being red to the last one being red is valid, there must be a false conditional with a true antecedent and a false consequent, right? Sharp distinction. Okay, so when, when we go back to K3 and LP, these logics are gonna help us to explain what's going on in the Sorites series, but they will give us very different results, right? In the first place, in the, in the first place, let, let's concentrate on the semantics. So a conditional, A conditional B, is the material conditional is equivalent to the disjunction of the negation of the antecedent and the consequent, right? And this is gonna have the, the value of the maximum between the negation of the antecedent and the consequent, right? So if we go to the to this right sequence and and we concentrate on these conditionals, A1 is red, then A2 is red, AK is red, then AK plus one is red, etc. What we see is that each conditional is, at the beginning, each of these conditional is, takes value one, right? At some point, the truth value of the conditional drops to the middle value, right? And, but at, at some point, again, the conditional goes up, right? because at the beginning, the antecedent, this one is red to degree one, right? So its negation takes value zero, right? But this one is, we can suppose, red to degree one, right? So it takes value, the maximum value, right? At some point, this one, this one might be red to degree one, and this one to degree half, right? So the negation of this takes value zero, but still this one takes value half, right? And the disjunction will take the maximum. So the idea is that the value of the conditionals never drop to zero, right? Okay, so we've got two different solutions in K3 and in the case of LP. In the case of K3, Modus ponens, as you, can, as you can check now that you know how to use the tableaus with this kind of logics, modus ponens is K3 valid, right? So this inference here, this inference here is valid in K3, right? So <clears throat> actually what someone holding this logic would say about this paradox is that the reasoning, the inferences used in the paradox, the reasoning is valid. But the argument is unsound, right? Although the reasoning is valid, some premise is not true, right? So that's the, that's the K3 solution. And you can say, well, we've got the same problem that we have in classical, as in classical logic, right? And the guy holding this solution will tell you no. Because in classical logic, being untrue means being false, right? And this means that there is a sharp transition from falsity, from truth to falsity, right? 
in the case of K3, although some premises are true, the conditionals are never, never false, right? And this guarantees that there is no conditional with true antecedent and false consequent, right? So, I mean, of course, there, there is a lot of discussion going on here, but someone holding K3 might still want to say that there is no sharp transition from truth to falsity, right? Okay, the second solution is the LP solution, right? So in this case, for LP standards, if you remember, for LP, being true means taking value more than zero, right? So for LP standards, all these conditionals are actually true, right? What happens in the case of LP is that although all the premises are true, the reasoning in the paradox is not valid. If you remember in the previous video where we put the example of a, of a tableau for LP, we showed that this inference here does not preserve tolerant truth, right? So for K3 standards, the reasoning, the premises are true, but the reasoning is not valid. Okay, so which solution is better, right? Now, which solution should we stick to? So should we hold K3? Should we hold that some premise is less than true, although not false? Should we hold LP? So should we hold that all the premises are true, but the reasoning is not valid? It is not easy to say, right? But I would say that, in a sense, the LP solution is better, right? Why? Because the LP solution tells you that the premises are true, and from a psychological point of view, the truth of these conditionals is so plausible that I, I think that this sort of solution, in a sense, is, is better than K3 solution. Of course, the problem of LP is that modus ponens is not valid, right? So although these, these conditionals are true, in a sense, these conditionals are too fragile, right? And they cannot express tolerance like in a robust way. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to see a, a different sort of solution with some striking consequences, making use of these three truth values. See you then in a minute.